What's going on everybody? Christian Ballard here with Ballard Sports Media coming at you with another college football preview video today and up today we got the Texas A&M Aggies. Change that lighting there. It was bothering me. But anyway, so you look at Texas A&M uh, coming off I, I guess kind of a down type of year in the sense that Jimbo Fisher uh, gonna be entering year three in 2020 with the Aggies uh, after starting out in 2018 you look back at that year um, they were pretty much I guess you could say if not the runner-up at least third in the SEC West they finished overall eight and four winning a bowl game against NC State back in 2018 um, they go eight and four that year almost beat Clemson who went on that year to of course win the national championship uh, then you look at la last year start out with a cupcake in Texas State uh, at home blow them out 41 to 7 uh, you lose by two touchdowns at Clemson uh, whereas the year before I think you failed with a two-point conversion uh, but you lose by two touchdowns to the defending champions at the time in Clemson. Not a bad loss. Uh, you lose to Auburn two weeks later, 28-20 at home. Auburn went on to uh, almost beat Georgia. They beat Alabama in the Iron Bowl. So I, I guess it's not that bad of a loss. But, you know, still a game that kind of got away from them. Lose to Alabama 47-28 at home. Uh, lose 19-13 on the road at Georgia in a game that was only a six-point game uh, to a really good Georgia team. Uh, of course, you probably saw my Georgia preview video. I thought they're a good program uh, that I think Kirby Smart has them going in the right direction, but uh, they just kind of had a down type of year last year. And Fromm did not have his best moments. Uh, and, of course, lose at LSU the final week of the season. Rivalry weekend, 50-7 to to the eventual national champion, the LSU Tigers. So, uh, you lost three road games and one home game. Or, actually, two home games, both against Auburn and Alabama. So, not some bad losses. It's not like they crap the bed against a cupcake, but at the same time, a couple moments where they could have, but didn't, uh, and it got away from them. Uh, but moving past that, let's look ahead to 2020. All right, start off with quite a few cupcakes. Uh, open the season up with three straight home games. Abilene Christian Wildcats, not even sure who, who or what that is, uh, a Christian school. Uh, God bless them, I guess. Uh, North Texas, Mean Green, the next week. North Texas is... Uh, North Texas, I guess. Uh, Colorado. Colorado is a Pac-12 team. That's not that's not necessarily a cupcake. It's not a nobody. Um, you know, when you look at it, Colorado is not a... They're, they're not a powerhouse school. Um... You know, but uh, I, I mean, they're they're. I don't even know what their record was. I don't know what to make of Colorado. I guess they they can compete a little bit in the Pac-12. I know they're in the Pac-12, but you know, as far as the Pac-12 level goes, they're not Washington or Oregon level quite yet. But uh, you know, then you get looks like a neutral site game against Arkansas September twenty sixth. Uh, then you're on the road at Mississippi State, home against Fresno State, Cupcake, at Auburn, at South Carolina, um, bye week on Halloween. Quite a few SEC teams have bye weeks then. Uh, Ole Miss, Vandy, at Alabama the week before rivalry weekend. That's kind of a change up in the SEC scheduling, playing a... SEC game prior to rivalry weekend as opposed to what 
you normally see with a cupcake game before your rival. And of course, LSU comes to town. We remember a few years ago, two years ago, what was it, 74 to 72 uh, in the seven overtimes. That took forever. So when I look at this, I um, I don't know. Your your tough games, it, it's kind of 50-50 for me. Uh, I, I see you winning your first two or three games. I think the Abilene Christian Wildcats, Cupcake, no problem. North Texas, no problem. Uh, I'm not sure. Now, I'm not going to come on here and say they're good enough of a program to do this or that. I don't know what to make of Texas A&M because they lose quite a bit to um, uh, the NFL draft. I think they lost that guy, Justin Matabuke. Um, you know, and uh, who else did they lose? Didn't they lose um, like a wide receiver? And uh, didn't Kellen Mon leave too? Or maybe he's coming back. I don't know, but they do lose a couple key pieces. Uh, they get some four and five star guys coming in. Not sure um, uh, who exactly uh, is going to play next year, but we will see. Uh, oh, they got the guy, Haynes uh, King, a dual threat quarterback, by the way. Uh, I thought he was a five star, but he was. Uh, Highly ranked recruit. He's enrolled. I didn't even know where he signed. Um, so he could start at quarterback. I don't know. But uh, anyway, we will have to see. But I think A&M could be a team that could get better with Jimbo Fisher. Uh, I think he knows what he's doing. He's a great coach. He did pretty well at Florida State, won the title there. Of course, after that, though, it did go downhill. But... Uh, I would say it's a team that is somewhat heading in the right direction. We'll just have to see, but uh, but I think you win your first three games. I don't think I think coming off two cupcakes and then Colorado coming to town should be no problem against Arkansas. I think they're a far better team against Arkansas, uh, far better team than Arkansas, I should say. So that should be no problem. It is neutral site. Uh, in Dallas, or technically Arlington, but it's where the Cowboys play. Uh, at Mississippi State, that's a game to look out for. What will Mike Leach look like for Mississippi State? I'll do a Mississippi State preview video pretty soon. I'm not sure what to make of them at the moment. Um, Tommy Stevens, the Penn State quarterback that transferred there last year, will be returning, I believe. So uh, he's a pretty good talent. We'll have to see what else Mississippi State looks like uh, defense-wise and everything like that. Uh, but I, I could see, I don't know, I, I could see them early in the season losing a game at Mississippi State. It could be close. They could win it. I could see them losing that. Fresno State should be no problem. At Auburn, uh... I, I picked Auburn to win this game in the Auburn preview, I believe, because it's in Jordan Hare. If it were at Kyle Field, that's a different story. I'm gonna get I'm gonna stick to Auburn winning this game uh at the barn on October seventeenth. Next week at South Carolina. Uh South Carolina is I don't want to say they're down in the dumps, but Will Muschamp just is so inconsistent. He just, I don't, you wonder why the guy is still there. Now, they did beat Georgia last year, which, uh, you know, and, and listen, I'm not going to sit here and say South Carolina's the dirt in the SEC or anything. They're not. They're decent. They could win six games and make a bowl game. Uh, they can... They're, they're just not at the level where they're competing for the East, if anything. They are really good at home. They won on the road at Georgia last year. I'm not sure uh, what happened in that game. That it got to the point of double OT, but it just did. Uh, but I I don't know. I have a feeling that could be a trap game for a and They could lose that. So... 
We'll see. Ole Miss coming to town should be no problem. Lane Kiffin, I like the hire. I'll do an Ole Miss preview uh, pretty soon. Um, I, I don't know what to make of them at the moment, but I think that if this were in Oxford, they, might, they would have an edge, obviously, being at home, and it's tough on the road in the SEC. Um, but I, I like A&M to win at home here. Home against Vandy should be no problem. Vandy's still in the dumps. Derek Mason, they're still putting up with that guy. Um, I mean, they, they had a good running back in Keyshawn Vaughn last year, who's now with the Buccaneers. I actually like that pick, by the way. Uh, I, they don't recruit that well. Um, and they've just been scraping, scraping the bottle, the bottom of the barrel in the SEC East for quite some time. I don't see them doing much, uh, this year. Uh, at Alabama, in Tuscaloosa, Bama's a far better team. Uh, I mean, listen, it wasn't even that close in Kyle Field last year, was it? What was the score of last year? Uh, if you think you're going to come in, uh, 47-28 the score, and Bama won. Uh, if you think you're coming to Tuscaloosa and keeping it close, and you're going to, oh, we're going to keep up with Bryce Young. No, no, you're not. No, you're not. I don't care who your quarterback is. You're No, stop it. LSU comes to town. After that, on November 28th, rivalry weekend, uh, I I don't know. Uh, again, I did an LSU preview video. I get they're the defending champs, but they lose so much. They're going to be working with the new quarterback. They're going to be working with, uh, I guess, Insminger's still there. Uh, Dave Aranda, I think the defensive coordinator left for Baylor. Um, who's the other guy? Joe Brady, um, uh, left. Joe Burrow left. I think LSU is going to be a good team. You beat them in seven overtimes the last time at Cal Field two years ago. Uh, and of course you lost the game last year. I don't think it was that close. Uh, at least you didn't give up 70 something points, but, um, I don't know. You come off a loss to Alabama. Prior to that, you win two games with Ole Miss and Vandy. I I don't want to sit here and uh, I don't I don't know what to make of LSU all that much. Again, I know I did a preview video, but still, they lose so much. They won't be necessarily what they were last year. I think they're still going to be a good team. Use some motivation to at least try to make another playoff run. They might have it figured out by the end of the year. But this is at Kyle Field. Rivalry weekend. Probably going to be a night game. And even if it's not, it's loud there. I'm going to give it to A&M there. So with that being said, let me see. Let me count these losses. Loss at Auburn, Bama. Let's see. I think they lose at Auburn, at Bama. That's two. At Mississippi State. And... I think South Carolina could pull an upset, too. So, with that being said, uh, we're looking at probably an 8-4 and four season. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I'm a little bit confused at the moment. Had a, quite a long day. Uh, but I think you lose, um, again, at South Carolina, at Auburn, at Alabama, and at Mississippi State, four road games you lose. Um, and uh, 
you could win all your home games. Listen, I'm I'm not necessarily sitting sitting here and saying they don't have a shot against Auburn. They don't have a shot against South Carolina. I think they do, but at the same time, again, South Carolina beat Georgia last year. You know, Georgia beat A and M. Uh, South Carolina can pull upsets at home. They beat Georgia on the road last year. Uh, I mean, you're coming off a tough road game against Auburn. You can say whatever you want to about, oh, we lose it. It's motivation, but it, it's it's going to be tough. It's not that favorable of a schedule, especially middle of the season. So, I don't know. It is what it is. About 8-4 and four for the A&M Aggies. Um I do I do like Jimbo Fisher. Again, as I mentioned, I like the hire. I I do think he can do something with this program, but it takes time and effort, man. Uh I mean, just keep recruiting, keep getting there, you know? Keep trying to compete. Uh and you'll get it somewhere. I believe that. So anyway. Eight and four for the Texas A and M Aggies this year, I guess. Uh anyway. That's pretty much it for this preview video. Aggies fans, go ahead and comment down below. Tell me why I'm wrong. Chew me out and stuff. Uh, any other fans of any other fan bases, tell me why I'm right. Tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, again, this is just a prediction. I don't know what's going to happen. This is just how I feel. I like A&M. Again, I like the Jimbo Fisher hire. But, man, you lose your quarterback in Kellen Mond. Um Actually, no, I, th I think, again, he is returning, isn't he? Uh, for 2021 or 2020. Uh, yeah, he, he will be returning. So that's something that you don't have to worry much about. Uh, but still, you lose... Uh, I mean, you, you still lose some pieces on the defense. We'll have to see what that looks like. But, <clears throat> but anyway... We'll, we'll have to see what happens, but anyway, that's it for this video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, Aggie fans, tell me why I'm wrong. Anyone else, again, as I mentioned, tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, about 8-4, and four. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you guys next time. Until then, Ballard Sports Media, checking out. Y'all have a good day.